Hello and welcome to this complete guide to using GPT-4 API. Finally, it has been released to the general public. There are no more betas, no more betas, whatever. We now all have access to GPT-4. So in this video, what I thought I would do is give you all an updated method on how to produce or how to use the OpenAI Playground to its full potential. This is the playground, but first of all, we have to talk about a few things. First of all, what is the difference between ChatGPT and using the ChatGPT4 API inside the playground? Why I personally think it's better, etc., etc. So the playground is a way to play with the API and see what it can do. So th this is actually not supposed to be for creating content, etc. It's just supposed to be a tester for you to then put your own API into a Python script or to calls to the API in your own Python script or whatever it might be. But what I found out fairly early on is that you can actually use the playground to create better content than, for example, using the chat GPT inside the UI. So in my experience, this is because it understands and stays on task a little bit more easily. I believe this is because it has a system and a user prompt. It seems to have a better understanding of what you're asking it. So if you ask it something specific, it seems to understand that thing a little bit better. It outputs in raw HTML or in Markdown, which is a really, really handy thing. So if I say write an article in Markdown, you'll see when I press submit, it's going to have hashtags and things. Whereas if I do the same thing in ChatGPT and I say write me an article in Markdown and press enter, what it does is it automatically formats it. That's just a very, very small point, but it's actually more useful using um, using HTML. So if I say write an article in HTML and then press submit, this is something that ChatGPT can't actually do, okay? Oh, actually, maybe it can. Write an article in HTML. I think it can do HTML, yeah, it can. Okay, so yeah, both of these, it's very, very useful. I didn't, I, f I completely forgot that you could also do this in ChatGPT. But again, I personally just prefer the playground. Other things is there's never any formatting issues when you're copying and pasting for the reasons that I just showed you. It's easier to control the output, again, because of the system prompt. We'll talk about all of this in this video. And it's actually cheaper than ChatGPT Pro, okay? So right now you have the choice of playing paying for ChatGPT Pro. The pricing is actually pretty high, okay? So let's go on introducing ChatGPT Plus. Let's see if there's pricing here. So let's click on pricing. Do we actually have ChatGPT Plus here? Okay, so I'm currently paying $20 a month. Now, before we continue, you do have to pay for the open AI API, the ChatGPT API, but it is actually cheaper, okay? The playground is called the playground because it's a way for you to input information into the API and see what comes out. But as I said before, I realized very, very early on that it actually produces better content than the ChatGPT uh, user, the UI, okay? So... Let's talk about the important things to know about the playground. First of all, it's on platform.openai.com slash playground. So if you just go on, uh, go on the URL like this and then type in slash playground. Another way you could get to this is going on Google and typing in open AI playground. And as you can see, this is actually where you will be taken to. You will need to make an account. I highly recommend that you give yourself. So if I go on my manage account here, Give yourself an organization name. This seems to help you get new features more quickly. And then you can also set yourself a rate limit if you want, or at least, sorry, on usage at the bottom. Yeah, if you click on billing basically and click on usage limits, you can set, your, you can set a limit to make sure you don't spend too much money. If you're using auto GPT or anything like that, then I would probably highly recommend that you do put a hard limit on here and you make it fairly low just in case you end up spending too much money. But if you set yourself a soft limit, that means when you hit that point, it will actually email you and say that you've hit that limit, okay? This is a really, really good way to not spend too much money. 
Just be careful because you can spend a lot of money, but if you only write two to three articles a day, you should spend less than the ChatGPT Plus subscription. These are the most important things. If you click on billing history, no, sorry, if you click on usage, this is how you can see how much you're spending every day. I write quite a lot of content and I rarely spend more than, I mean, some days I do spend $15. These are mainly like auto GPT and those kind of things. This is just me experimenting with uh, really, really expensive API calls, basically. But in general, the likelihood that you're going to spend this much money is really, really low. Okay. And if you're just writing content, which is what I'm going to show you in this video, I wouldn't worry too much about spending too much money. It's really, really hard to spend that much money. But you do need a payment method. This is paid, but if you use it kind of sparingly, you're not going to spend that much money at all. A good thing as well is if you want to know how much you're spending like per call, you can click and select a day and you can find how much one single call or one single article is actually costing you. This isn't working right now, but an article on average will cost you less than $1, uh, probably significantly less, even if you're using ChatGPT4. Now let's talk about the actual playground. So as you can see here, well, you want to be on chat mode and you want to put it on GPT4. The only things I recommend you change are the temperature and the maximum length. The temperature, I recommend you put it on low, like 0 0.25, and length, I recommend you put it on the highest. I would not change anything else, but let me quickly show you what happens if you put temperature very high. And then I say, write a poem and press submit. It's just going to give me some absolute crazy, crazy stuff that doesn't even make any sense. Oh, bother thrall obstructions, toast slight bitter plain volition nude, est voltaic gray. No, it's, there's, some of these are not even real words. Okay, so just be really careful with temperature. Personally, I recommend putting it on below 0 0.30, and then if I say write a poem now, you'll see that the content actually makes sense, which at the end of the day, your content needs to make sense if you want to rank it on Google. These things here, frequency penalty and presence penalty, if you put this on, the problem is that it will not keep to the instructions properly because it gives like an override to this information. So for example, frequency penalty, it will look for tokens that already appear in the, um, in, the, in the writing and it won't do those things. But if you're trying to do, for example, internal links or talk about a similar topic, it just won't work, okay? So I recommend only changing temperature and maximum length. And then you can, th well, let's have a quick look at the pricing. So if I go back on pricing here, you can see it's really, really not that expensive, okay? So it's right here, and it says multiple models, each with different capabilities and price points. Prices are per 1,000 tokens. You can think of tokens as pieces of words, where 1,000 tokens is about 750 words, okay? So 750 words is going to cost you 0 0.06 cents, which means to write an article of 2,250 words, quick maths, it's going to cost you 25 cents. If you write 100 articles a month, it is going to be slightly more expensive than ChatGPT. If you write 80 articles a month, and I probably wouldn't recommend writing more than that unless you really know what you're doing, the cost is going to be significantly less than a ChatGPT Premium, which is the main reason I'm making this video, as well as the fact that I actually prefer the content that is made. So now that we've got that out of the way, now everyone knows how to use the ChatGPT4 playground with, uh, sorry, GPT4 within the playground, let's talk a little bit about use cases. So you'll find this in the description of this video. There'll be a link to this. This is my plan for this video. And yeah, basically what I like to do is I first like to create an outline. We're going to use the classic example that I always use. So black tie attire for men and we'll press submit. What this does is it creates a really, I, I like to use essay outline instead of article outline because it gives you a much more thorough description of everything that should be in the article. And then I've got this beautiful prompt which I've been working on. The idea behind this particular prompt is to basically give you a clickable 
and rankable article um, that really, really goes into a lot of detail. So there are a few things in the prompt here, but what we're going to do is we first need to collect everything together. So this is an example of the prompt that I would actually just put directly into ChatGPT. However, I have been thinking recently, and I definitely have too many internal links, generally speaking, I would not recommend having this amount of internal links, okay? So I'm not going to delete it just for this article, but what I would normally do first is I would take this into um, ChatGPT, probably the front end, and I would say something like, please pick the best five Please pick and list the best five internal links for an article about black tie attire for men. All this will do is it'll give me five uh, internal links instead of using this ridiculous amount that I've had right here. Now just list the, um, what's it called? The URLs. Okay, so what, you, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these as examples, okay? Like, you can definitely be a bit more selective with which ones you want to use in the article. But let's just say, let's use these ones right here. You can see it talks about tuxedos, wearing the opera, which is a black tie event. Uh, maybe this isn't a good one. And maybe this is a good one because you can technically not wear a bow tie if you don't want to wear a bow tie. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to get rid of these terrible spelling mistakes which I didn't even realize I made earlier we're going to get my essay outline like this I'm going to show you two use cases of uh, chat GPT 4 in open in the open AI playground by the way this is not the only one this is just the first one what I like to do after getting the outline is I just put everything here and then as I said before put these here and here and then I say write the first part of three for this article. This time I use the word article, not essay, because I want it to be a blog post at the end of the day. So this is the title right here, and we can see that it's giving me a table, which really, really helps with engagement. If you just have an instant wall of text, people often just click off the article. They don't spend very long on the article because they don't get the information they need. But if you answer the question at the very top with a table or some points summarizing or whatever it might be, that is one of the strongest ways to get quick and easy traffic, okay? This article I know already would be a very, very good article to have on the website. I do already have an article about this, but basically this is just a quick way to make very, very, very good content. So I'm gonna cancel that. Basically, you would say, write the second half, write the conclusion. But I do need to show you a few more things before the end of the video. Once you've got your markdown article like this, you need to go to markdown2html.com, control V it straight into there, and then you want to take the raw HTML and you want to put that into WordPress or Shopify, depending on what you work on, okay? That is how I currently write content. This is the best way to write content, in my opinion. This is ranking me very, very well on Google. Um, I'm not going to show proof of that. You can go and watch my other videos or whatever if you want to see proof of that, or you can just believe me because I'm telling you the truth. The other thing I want to show you is how I actually made my Printify script the other day. Okay, and I really, really want to talk about this because I just think it's so damn important to understand how to do this. So, what I like to do and what I've been doing very, very recently to make, to automate anything, okay? If you want to do something automatically without, you know, yeah, basically doing everything manually, what you need to do is you need to find the documentation. And this is currently not possible in the open AI playground, but I'm going to show you something which makes it possible in one second. The reason it's not possible is, of course, it's too long and GPT-4 has a 8K token limit. So if I say, please um, write me a script, for example, it's going to say that it's too long. Just so you know, this will also happen while you're writing content. So if it says this, what you want to do, if you just want to write a conclusion or something, you can actually just put the maximum length down to like 400 and then say, please write me a conclusion, okay? The token limit is from the system plus the user plus anything else that has been generated in this session. So what we can do instead, okay, if you've got a short documentation, okay, 
then you're already done. All you need to do is, for example, let's just grab, um, let's just grab a little bit of information instead of all the information so I can show you what I mean. So let's just take uh, this, for example. Now, if I say, please write me a script and put the maximum length up a bit, what it's going to do is it's going to write me a basic Python script for making a GET request to receive a list of all available blueprints from an API. So yeah, if the documentation for what you're trying to do is short or if ChatGPT already knows the information, okay? So if you said like, write me a script to crawl Google, it will already know how to do that. However, Printify actually released their API after 2021. So instead, what I did, and this is exactly how I made my script that I released in a video very, very recently. There's a website called nat.dev. It's a little bit kind of weird the way it works. I don't think it's dodgy, okay? I hope it's not dodgy. It's, it feels a little bit dodgy, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not dodgy. And basically, they have all of the... Um, open source LLMs like Alpaca, Llama, etc. But what they also have actually is GPT-432K. If you're wondering why they do this, they've obviously just got access to it and they want to be the, the, the big people who everyone comes to to do their stuff. So they've obviously, they're losing a little bit of money on this probably, even if you have to pay $5 to use it. They're probably still losing money, to be quite honest with you, because their API bill must be absolutely massive. But it can do all of this data, okay? Now, it does work in a little bit of a way. It's in a weird way. It's not perfect, et cetera, et cetera. But if I say, write me a script that automatically uploads to Printify, and then press Submit, it's just gonna, it's gonna do it, basically. Okay, normally it would do it, but like I said, it is a little bit dodgy and maybe even this is too long. So you can delete some stuff at the bottom, like I don't really need webhooks and uh, orders and things like that. So let's press, press submit again. Again, it probably might, yeah, it's probably not gonna work. The reason for that is because their website is just not that well made right now, but it does work and it did work yesterday for me and that's how I do all of my programming. Anyway, I really wanted to make this video because ChatGPT4 has been released to everyone. Everyone now has access to the API. So now there's no excuse not to watch my videos and get the full experience from them. Thank you for watching. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content and peace out.